Hello, everybody. My name is Kenny Nguyen, and this is my partner, Vladimir Alvarado. And today we're going to talk about wallpaper groups. Now, what is a wallpaper group? A wallpaper group is a symmetrical tile pattern that can be expanded infinitely in the Euclidean plane. It includes several different types of, oh, sorry, I should probably speak in the microphone. Uh, yeah, the wallpaper group is a symmetrical tile pattern that can be expanded infinitely in the Euclidean 2D plane. It is made up of a building block called a fundamental cell. This fundamental cell is then either reflected, rotated, translated, or guided with reflected across an axis or an origin. And in, in the example on screen, the, the, the fundamental cell, which is the building block of the tile, is first reflected on the y-axis and to create a, something like a plane, which would then be reflected upon the x-axis. This would then be translated into an infinite uh, 2D plane like you would see on the screen to create a tile pattern. Now, these uh, wallpaper groups, which there are 17 of, you can see on the screen here, different kinds of, use these uh, symmetrical transformations to create a, a, a uh, tessellation that you would see on the screen. And it was first, it, it, was, it is used by uh, artists like MC Etcher, who uh, played around with impossible spaces, um, hyperbolic parabolas, and uh, uh, infinite, infinite spaces as well. And uh, he, he was very inspired by the work of George Polya, a Hungarian mathematician who worked on uh, these types of patterns. And George Polya derived them in 1924. And he, he, in his work, although very much known in the West, it wasn't really the first to exhibit these patterns. Uh, Evgraf Fedorov, uh, a Russian crystallographer, mineralist, and, and mathematician, where was the first one who, just, who, who uh, derived them in, 19, in 1891. So before we talk about the 17 possible orientation of the wallpaper groups, we have to go for its prerequisites, which is the freeze pattern, which all applies the four fundamental symmetries of wallpaper groups. Although they're not related, it also use reflection, rotation, translation, and glider reflection. These all have 17 possible freeze pattern, and they all go on one directional repeats. First of all, we want to talk about the first possible orientation, which is P1, where it's only one unit tile move in the translation up, down, left to right in an infinite Euclidean plane. And then we can talk about rotation, where we start, we start seeing six axes of rotation in one complete tile, where at the middle we get a complete uh, six-order rotation, a triangle which uses third-order rotation, and a second-order rotation to form the complete tile, and then we would have translation over the infinite plane. Next, I want to talk about glide and reflection with the example P4M, where you can see the uh, dashed line, dash uh, green lines such as the vertical, vertical reflection, and the blue dashed line resemble the horizontal reflection, and then a red triangle which resemble the four rotation around this square complete tile, and then a final translation over the infinite plane. I'm only going to talk about three of them because there are all 17 of them, and it's going to take a lot of time going through that, and. How can we not talk about these 17 patterns without talking about the Islamic geometric pattern? These appeared everywhere in the Islamic world, from carpets to tiles to furniture, platewares, mosques, and pavements. They all capture this beauty and intricate mesmerizing pattern. But going to the psychological pattern, we ask ourselves, why do we love patterns? Gestalt theory of visual perception suggests that it has to do with similarity, Proximity, connection, symmetry, and order. These are instincts that exist in our pr primitive mind back in the days when we have to deal with ambiguity to suggest that whether something is a threat or not in a hunter's life. We have apophenia when suggests 
uh, perception of connection to patterns. And one of those connections is pareidolia, where this where these connection to pattern suggests that whether we see a face or not, we know that humans are social creatures and we tend to group up with each other to find well, protection and shelter. These uh, perception to connection helps us survive longer, last into modern days, which is why these instincts still exist in our brain to nowadays. Going through that, uh, back to the 17 orientation, we talk about P4M, which is very prominent in our art and structure, specifically in our Humbra Palace in Spain, where P4M appears significantly more than any other pattern. There are three possible reasons to why, because P4M is, first of all, a square. Being a square and Historically speaking, houses back in the day were majority of square or rectangular, making a square tile make it easier to brick lays, cover up corners instead of having triangles where it was back in the day still vague to uh, imagine. And it has three symmetries, symmetries of glide, reflection, and rotation. We tend to love uh, complicated patterns, and the more symmetry that one pattern exists, the more we love it. Now, I'm gonna be talking about Alhambra a bit more. Alhambra is a uh, palace in Spain, a World Heritage Site created in the 15, uh, no, 16th to 17th centuries, about 400 years earlier than the derived patterns were found by the different mathematicians. Uh, the Alhambra is very special just because it is one of the only locations in the world where you can find all 17 of these wallpaper group patterns. And here are a few examples of them. These are the no rotation symmetry pattern, patterns, meaning that there's uh, no rotation in any of these. You can see these uh, taken into, uh, into walls, paintings that are very, very hard to look at, but with the work of uh, digital art, pe people have been able to re recreate them. You can also see that in s several different parts of Alhambra, there are various other colors that you can find in the, these uh, patterns. Uh, what people, when people go to study these patterns in Alhambra, they would generally not, they only think about the geometrical way of th that they look like, but not really the colors, because it, it would make it harder to um, assign them to their group. Now, here, here's a few examples. This one specifically is one that is very hard to find in, in the palace, and many people say that this one didn't really exist in the palace before, simply because they could never find it, but they found one in a very small area of a leaf. Uh, and these are the, the rest of the patterns that you would see in the palace, and that's basically all 17 patterns just found in a single location. So as we just mentioned, these things are very prominent in the human art. These are applied in pottery, porcelain design, and clothing, including Polish porcelain, the Islamic porcelain, or the Chinese porcelain. And even back in ancient time, when we have ancient pottery of Greeks, where it also applied these uh, geometric patterns, we also have clothing in nowadays that talks about that also uses these symmetries to attract our attention, like Pierre Cardin, one of the prominent clothing brand that gives men good posture, good style, good clothing, with other like Gucci for ladies. We're gonna talk a little bit more about these pots. Specifically, I want to talk about the pots because this is a, a type of geometric art found in Greece, a, ancient Greece, that is. And I, I think as long as about 4,000 to 1,000 BC, they found several of these pots around and using these things that are called, I believe, meters, which are uh, Greek uh, line art that is very uh, symmetrical in a freeze pattern. They're freeze patterns, but they can be defined as wallpaper groups as well. Now, when talking about the different cultures and how they use these patterns, we can talk about uh, things like the, this is, okay, so the, when, when talking about this, sorry, we, we can talk about the, the Japanese t traditional patterns that each have a name, and the, the Japanese have, 17 wall, have found the 17 wallpaper groups inside their traditional patterns that they would use on their clothing, like kimonos and yukatas that you would see in traditional uh, Japanese clothing. And this is called the, the se, se, sekaiha, which is a, a, a pattern that signifies um, uh, strength, good luck, uh, 
vitality, meaning that the, the se means ocean, I mean, the se means blue, the kai means ocean, and the ha means wave, meaning blue, ocean, wave. And on the right, you would see the African patterns that are also very similar in how they uh, incorporate different parts of, of their culture and environment, from flora to animal life that you'll find in, in the African, um, uh, African environment. And they would use these patterns to signify the different things inside their clothing as well. This one here, I, uh, I believe this, I was talking to someone and I think they said it was from a, a certain country. Uh, I believe they said it was from Kenya, but um, uh, it's, I'll say it's from Kenya, but it's, it's a certain type of pattern that in the zigzags in, in Africa means uh, life is not always easy and it's not always a straightforward path. Aside the symbolism and culture from humans, Nature has already had these patterns exist in the old days, the days when these things started to exist. You can see that a honeycomb and a bug, a fly's eye, and a snowflake has one thing in common. They have these hexagonal shapes. So why are these hexagonal shapes so prominent in nature? So one thing is that because it's very stable. It contains all liquid, it, doesn't, it covers up all the angles. Hexag hexagons stacking each other uh, creates 120 angles, and they all add up to 360, and which is why it's very good at holding liquids. It's very good at uh, folding in three-dimensional plane on the fly's eye, and it's very good on snowflakes because it's very stable in energy and in uh, shapes. So the same application has been applied to graphene. Physicist Andre Jem uh, and Konstantin Nososelov won the Nobel Prize in 2010 for the discovery of graphene from the extraction of graphite. These graphenes are the thinnest material in the world. Carbon arranged in hexagonal shape, just like a honeycomb. It's very flexible, very thermoconductive, and very electroconductive. Being that it's very flexible, meaning it can be used to apply in clothing, cars, uh, electrical devices, tanks, all sorts of thing, being very thermoconductive, making it very good at absorbing heat. It can be used for solar panels, uh, nuclear power plants, and even sustaining the life of batteries if it's ever overheated. And being very electroconductive, meaning it can be used for uh, supercapacitor, superconductor to help and apply to electronics nowadays to improve battery lives and some other application. And then one of the most prominent uh, uses of uh, wallpaper groups is applied in X-ray crystallography imaging, where we would create a crystal from a protein extracted from chemical processes, and then we use X-ray to uh, make a diffraction pattern. From that diffraction pattern, we use that pattern, apply complex math, and create an electron density map. From that electron density map, we can create the actual module of the protein. Why this is so important? Because we use this uh, X-ray crystallography to, uh, to, um, uh, to make vaccines. It's used to model like using P, uh, protein data banks for people to research and apply these proteins to use for helpful things in medicine and vaccines. One of the most a uh, reliable one was the Rosalind Franklin case where she applied crystallography to make, to find out the double helix nature of the DNA, which then expand our knowledge to genetics and CRISPR editing genes. That is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. This is our presentation. <laughs>